In this video, we're going to be working with Storyboard Designer's internationalization feature. On the settings screen, I have three buttons for languages, English, French, and German, and we're going to use them to toggle from one language to another. The toggle will appear by applying changes to the alpha for each button on press, and at the same time, we're going to call for a translation on the days of the week in our five-day forecast. Any text that needs to be translated needs a dynamic text variable. If I click the icon for dynamic variable, add new variable, I'm just going to give this the name day, and then I'll hit finish and OK. I need a variable for each day of the week, so I'll do the same thing for Tuesday. Now we're adding a text string variable to our days of the week so that when we call for the language to switch from one to another, the declared value for this word in French or German can be assigned to this variable. Another way of adding a variable, since they're all using the same name, is going into my variables view, and I can copy a variable, and then what I can do is I can go to the control and just paste the variable there. Then all I have to do is go back to this controls properties view, add a dynamic variable, and point to this variable that's been pasted. But I have to remember to switch the value from Thursday to Friday. When I'm done, I'll click the icon to create a translation CSV file, and a language set will be added to our project. Let's call this file English, and when I hit save, the folder translations has been added to our project in the navigator view. Now I can open and edit my English CSV file with the text editor. So here's a list of all of the text string variables in our project, our days of the week, as well as the temperature that's on the thermostat layer. Since we're not translating that, I'm just going to delete it, and then we're going to close this file and save it, and we'll have one language set that's complete. Now I can take that language set and copy it in our translations folder, and then paste that copy into the same folder, and I'm just going to rename this one French. Now I can open that with the text editor and start applying translations. So here are all the text string variables for our days of the week. Each line reads out the path of the variable, followed by the declared value. So instead of the values being English, in this file they're going to be French. Also, the way that these lines are ordered are alphabetically, first by the layer name, and then by the control. When I'm done, I'll hit close and save, and our French language set will be ready. Now I'll add another copy of the English CSV file. I'm going to rename it to German, and now I'm ready to start applying translations. So, the first part of the line is the path to where the text variable is. After the comma is what the value being assigned to that control text is. So, when we call for a translation, this is everything we need to know where the translation needs to happen, and what the translation is going to be when it gets applied. Now I'm going to close and save this file, and then I'm all set to start applying translations. If I click the icon for Apply Translation, I can select the German CSV from the dialog box, and when I hit OK, the variable definitions are changed. In the same way, I can apply a translation to switch back to the English. This feature lets you preview your content while developing your application. To call a translation during runtime, I'm going to add an action that says, on press, we're going to load a Lua script, and the function name, uh, let's give it the name cb underscore load underscore language. Now, whether I hit English, French, or German, I'm going to call this function, but I want it to load the proper language, so I'm going to pass an additional argument that says language equals, and then I'll include the path to the particular CSV file for English.csv. Then when I hit finish, it's been added to my actions tab. So Here's the press event calling our function with the additional argument. Since it doesn't exist, when we hit edit, we'll create it in our callbacks Lua file. So here at the bottom, we've got our function. And in this, we're going to set up an empty table for lang underscore data. And we're saying that lang underscore data is going to be equal to the loaded language. And that's going to follow the additional argument that takes us to the path of our particular CSV file that's in our translations folder. Then, when we write the line for gre.set underscore data, we're telling the data manager that there's new data to be set, and that's when we'll see the switch from one language to another. Now we need a script that knows how to read through our translation CSV files and get the values from these files. I've gone to the wiki for luausers.org, and I've found some sample code that uses Lua to parse a CSV file, and I've added this script to our scripts directory. So our first function sets the data from the file passed as language, and language has that added argument that directs us to the appropriate CSV file in the translations directory. In this function, load language, it's going to use our CSV file parser to read our CSV file 
and return the information as a table that gives us the path of the variables for our weekdays and the declared values for those variables. All of this is going to get returned when we set the data. Now that we've finished writing our functions in Lua, I'm going to save the file and go back to the application view. For the English, French, and German buttons, I can use the same press event from my actions view. I can copy the action that calls the Lua script from English, and then I can paste it to the French button. Then, all I need to do is change the argument that sends us from the English CSV file to the French CSV file, and then I can do the same thing for my German. So, if I paste the action, I'll select the right press event that calls the Lua script, and we just want to change the path on the translations directory to the German CSV file. When I'm done, then the only thing left to do is to simulate and save the project. So I'll do that, we'll load it, and we'll start by going to the weather screen and loading the five-day forecast to see our days of the week. In my settings screen, I can select French. When I go back, our weekdays are now in French. If I go to the settings screen again and select German, now they're all in German. So now we know how to set up a translation and apply them during runtime and during development. In our next video, we'll take a look at how our storyboard application can communicate with external processes and tasks using Storyboard I.O. In this video, we've learned how to add existing string variables to text render extensions, create and edit multiple language sets, and apply a translation during development and runtime. And that covers Storyboard's internationalization feature. Thanks for watching.